Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. Today I want to talk about these. Now this is a pair of old speed play pedals that some of my customers has left here, but it's actually the same kind of pedal or very similar compared to what I was using for the past six years, basically five and something years, uh, mainly the Aero version though. And I'm a big fan of speed play pedals and I can certainly recommend them to everyone and I have been for my, recommending them for my customers. So if you're a speed play hater, then this video probably isn't for you. So just to sum up some of the features of the speed play pedal system, the zero in particular, because that's the most commonly used and now the only one available basically. So uh, first thing uh, that is very typical for speed lapels is the reversed cleat design. So the spring and retention mechanism is actually housed inside the cleat instead of the pedal itself. This makes the pedal a very minimalist and small unit which is a good thing for corner and clearance for aerodynamics and fit uh, as well. Then uh, speed play pedals used to be highly customizable because of the said uh, fairly complicated cleat design. It allows for very precise adjustments to your cleat position and also you get different spin lengths which are easy to change over. Now a lot of people had problems with the durability of the original speed play design so the first thing was that the cleat, the base of the cleat was developing wear in the plastic bit. I have this solved by the watch shop base plate protector plates, which are metal, so I don't really have that issue. Uh, then there was wear at the plastic pedal body itself, but in my opinion this didn't really affect the float that much. Uh, or the side to side rocking um, that people used to get. What did, however, is the wear in the so called bow tie section of the pedal. And this is because the cleat can wear a little bit of a hole, wear away the material from underneath there, and then it has basically more space to move around. Then another issue or a, another pain with these pedals. For most users, not for me. I actually I like that feature, but this uh, pedal, the old one, did have an open bearing design. So essentially, you had to inject grease straight into the pedal body where the bearings didn't have any kind of protection around them apart from that grease. So if you didn't do this regularly, the pedals and the bearings in them would just jam up and it will render them it would render them useless so that's something you need to take care of uh, but the upside to this was that the pedals had really low friction and if you wanted for time trials for example then you could just inject very thin grease in them and then you have very little friction so that basically sums up the setup and a couple of years ago wahoo have bought speed play as a brand and then uh, I think, yeah, last year basically they released a new range of zero pedals, which should be an improvement over the older speed play version. And uh, long story short, I think it is an improvement uh, in a couple of areas. I think the biggest one is the cleat. Now, uh, this is the old cleat, the yellow one. And contrary to popular belief, if you take care of them, Actually, they last an incredible amount of time. I usually get around 20,000 kilometers on mine, but bear in mind that I'm a, quite a competitive rider. I don't do coffee rides, etc. Uh, so I just don't walk around in them too much. Even though the cleat itself by design doesn't wear by walking on it, but actually clipping into and out of the pedal. That's how we get the wear and also float. Uh, so, the main thing that affects, affects the durability of mine is that simply the fact that I clean them regularly and I loop them regularly. So, if you do that, they can last very long. So, yeah, the problem with these, as I said, was the wear in the base plate, the adapter material. 
which you can solve by this, as I previously said. Um, and uh, many people, despite all of this, had still developed uh, float issues and sometimes the cleat was hard to engage into the pedal. Uh, so there were some complaints about this. Now the new cleat, apart from the color change to black, which is much more logical and subdued in my opinion. Uh, as you can see, I'm still using the protection plate because it's an excellent piece of design. And uh, actually the old and new pedals and cleats are all cross compatible, so we don't need to worry about that. If you have a set of old pedals, you can still use the new cleats. And you should, frankly, because they're made to much tighter tolerances and they just work better. The engagement is much more crisp, the hold is much more tight. I can't say about the durability because they were very uh, slowly, so I didn't really get a, through a pair yet. But because of these factors that I mentioned earlier, I would imagine that they last even longer than the previous generation. So that alone, I think, is a worthy upgrade if you're a speed play user. Now let's talk about the pedals. And for that, I'll just go to my bikes because I have a couple of pairs installed. So bear with me. Okay, so here is the pair that I have the most mileage on. These are the aero pedals on my road bike. And here's what you need to know basically about how they performed. So the biggest design change in the pedal body itself is the surround uh, metal plate. It's no longer a bow tie shape really. The way it actually engages with the cleat from the bottom side is exactly the same as before. So I imagine that through years of use you can still wear this out. They say it's made of a harder material, so that should help. What I can say though is that certainly it has a more crisp engagement, particularly together with the new cleat. So that's a good thing. Uh, no rocking side to side whatsoever with the shoe. So that's good. That's definitely an improvement. And because the plastic body is basically no longer exposed at any point, it eliminates that kind of risk as well with the wear from the previous generation. And since I also have the metal plates in the cleats, that really creates a rock solid hold and a very solid setup. So big thumbs up from me regarding this thing. Uh, these no longer use the open bearing design. They actually have closed cartridge bearings. So that makes the pedal basically at least according to Wahoo, not serviceable and uh, well, not user serviceable anyway and the bearings are not replaceable and on the upside you don't need to theoretically uh, maintain them at all. Well I did disassemble a pair of these completely. If so it is possible, it's not very convenient or not a plug and play style fit but it can be done so the bearings can be replaced and I should also be able to remove the pretty thick grease that is in there from the factory for obvious reasons for durability and replace it with a thinner one for performance. So that should all work, although I am pretty sure this will void your warranty, although if you don't mess it up there is no way for Speedplay to tell that you have disassembled the pedals. Anyway, uh, that's my take on the bearings. I had no issues with them so far. Some people have noted that when new they have quite a lot of friction. Uh, now I've ridden these a fair amount, so I think around 6000 kilometers, which is by the way not visible from them at all. And now the amount of friction, at least like this on feel, is basically the same as you would get with a properly looped old Speedplay pedal, so I don't think that's a huge difference there. But as I said, you can make them spin more freely if you remove uh, the seals and the thick grease that's in there. I haven't done that yet, but I will probably for next year's time trials. Now regarding the spindles, these aren't really available from Speedplay widely. 
yet in different lengths but it should come as I was promised. What I have here is a pair of aftermarket uh, Dulite titanium spindles which are shorter than you get uh, with the regular pairs. This is just because I require a very narrow Q factor as narrow as possible so this helps me achieve that. And it's a pretty straightforward change as well. I have a separate video about that. If you're interested, I'll link it in the description. So it is already possible with aftermarket options. One thing I've also experimented with is titanium plates, which save a tiny bit of weight. But I found that these aftermarket ones don't have that nice crisp engagement and positive feel that you get from these. So then I just swapped them back. To the standard ones. So on a whole it really is an improved system as far as I'm concerned. And now for the elephant in the room, a couple of people have been asking about this already. And uh, that's the axial play that plagued a lot of these pedals in the early batches, including three pairs that I got from uh, Wahoo at the beginning of the season So the problem is I couldn't actually figure out what causes it. It's something in the pedal body itself But after a couple of hours of riding or even sooner the pedal starts to Move around axially on the spindle, which is not ideal not a very pleasant feeling at all so What you do then is you send the pedals back to Wahoo and they give you a new pair the bonus of this is that you get a free pair of cleats, which I did each time. So now I basically have cleats for three or four seasons in advance, which is good in my book. Anyway, uh, Cycling Tips has reported problems even with the replaced uh, pedals. I think that's pretty unfortunate and they probably got replacement pedals from the same bunch uh, as before. With mine, really after they've sent me the replacements, the replaced pedals are completely fine and they have uh, no axial play at all. They do have some radial play, but this is just because the aftermarket spindle isn't machined to the same tolerance. As a standard one, I didn't have any kind of play with the factory spindles, so yeah, this is just... A unique issue for my set but it happens on well I have three sets of these and all three have these spindles in them and all three do have a slight amount of play it didn't really affect anything else just yet but it's not ideal so I'll just keep track of it uh, down the line so yeah I think that sums it up more or less regarding these pedals overall I'm happy with the performance even though these teething issues with the axles and the play has been a bit annoying but I always had a set of spare pedals so wasn't really a big issue for me per se and uh, I have to note that Wahoo are really quick with their customer service so it's really just a matter of days regarding turnaround so they're doing their best really regarding this so anyway the ones you buy right now should be all fixed so that should no longer be an issue one thing i do miss though is a replacement for for these now these are a bit of a unicorn actually these are the old speed play pave zeros and even from that it's the exclusive titanium version so very few of these have ever been released and as you can see they're on my gravel bike and have been for the whole winter and even off-road these work pretty damn good because you get a road pedal feel and a road pedal uh, power transfer with relatively good mud shedding abilities and I think in this day and age when gravel is all the rage unintentional rhyme there I think really this is an option that they should provide because it's more up-to-date than ever basically and also this particular one has an all-metal pedal body so really it should just last forever and certainly these have stood up to the test of time because they're again six years old basically 
and you can't really tell. So this is basically my biggest complaint about this new set that something like this uh, is not really offered. I'm lucky though because I have these but most people don't and I think it would be a great option. So anyway, that's my rundown on the new generation of Speedplay pedals. I hope this has been somewhat helpful when deciding to up whether deciding to upgrade or not. If you want to know more about upcoming tech that I'll be using for my racing and training, then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.